God would just sing your praise this morning. We thank you so much that we came. Dear God, this time of worship with our friends and family, there's nothing more special than that. God, we just ask that you would take this time and you would bless us. And as we bring you our gifts and offerings, dear God, we just ask that you would multiply those. And you would bless them and you would show us how to allocate those, dear God, that, that you, would, you would take these funds and that you would bless them in such a way that we could grow this church, that we could grow your name in the community and bring more people to know who you are. Dear God, please bless these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
don't clap this morning. Um, However, uh, if you were blessed by them, would you give a big old hearty amen? Amen. Amen. Did y'all hear it? We continue in our message series this morning uh, called Unfinished Business. It's a uh, three-month journey through looking at some of the essential truths that are found in the book of Acts, which was written by the Apostle Luke. Um, and it, it kind of documents the, the works, the inner workings, and the mission and ministry of the early church after the ascension of, of Jesus. And it was written to Theophilus, which means lover of God, which is us. All right. And so the whole, and uh, we, as we talked about for the, for the past however many weeks, uh, it, it's almost as if the ending, uh, Luke's, just kind of lifts up. It, it, there's no real closure. There's no real ending to it. And the, the idea there is that we, as the church, are to continue those things that have already been started um, with the early church, and, and we're supposed to carry on. So if we're going to carry on those things, there are probably some of those, stu- those teachings that we need to know what it is that it's telling us. Now, uh, some of you will gravitate to this a little bit quicker than, than others. Uh, but, uh, and I really didn't understand how this fit into the message uh, to start with, but it came clear actually this morning. Um, there's, a, there's a passage that I've been drawn to, and it comes out of the, uh, John's first epistle, so 1 John in the third chapter. It starts out with, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the children of God. And, and uh, more and more, that's, uh, I've just been hearing it a lot lately, uh, in, in my head as well as it coming out of my mouth. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the children of God. Now how beautiful is that? That's, isn't that a great message? Okay, well, well let me jump. Uh, a little bit behind that uh, that verse, this is how it continues on in 1 John 3. It says, We are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. Now, do you know when I use that verse or those verses? At a funeral. See, see, when people are sitting there and they're trying to figure out, trying to figure out what's going on, and, and okay, we've lost this person, and here in the physical sense, and we're trying to figure out what does this next thing look like, and 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 so I, I share those words. We are all God's children now. What we what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this: when He is revealed, we will be like Him for we shall see him as he is. And so some of you in the uh, Emmaus community uh, will go to Luke 24 and say, and then their, when their eyes were opened, they saw him. That word reveal just keeps popping out, popping out, reveal in, in the Scripture. And uh, we love that moment when something is revealed to us, don't we? Youth, youth, I'm talking to you. Youth. What did we call that when something, we had our aha moment? What was it? An epiphany. That's right. We love those, those revealing moments. Um, there's a TV show that, that uh, I, I enjoy every now and again, uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Do you all know the show? 
two of you know the show. Am I the only one? All right, all right. And so if you know, there's always that, that big scene in there where uh, Ty Pennington is out and he has his bullhorn out front and all the people are gathered up in front of the house and he grabs his bullhorn and he says three words. Move that bus. Turn Matthew's uh, mic off. Yeah, move that bus. And the idea is they're all there and then the, the bus is moved out of the way and the family... The last time they saw it, it was some sort of dilapidated house. It was full of uh, rotten this and that, or it didn't meet their needs for, for whatever uh, reason. Uh, some of the houses, is, they're actually unlivable. And then it's revealed all the beauty, all the changes, all the transformation that has happened. And I love that part as they start going through room by room by room by room. And they open up and, oh, I can live in this. you know. And, and Now, did you all see my Facebook question that I asked? Yeah, I know you did, Jen, because you responded to it. Thank you very much. I asked, when you see that part, when you see that part of that show... What is it that you think? What thoughts run through your mind? And the very first response to it said, I want them to come to my house. Right? Because that's what happens when we see something beautiful like that, when it's been revealed in such a wonderful way. He says, oh my goodness, I would love to see that type of transformation. And... Uh, and so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take that idea and we're going to actually go into the Scripture today. Our, our passage today comes out of Acts, the 8th chapter. It's verses 9 through 25. And it's going to be telling the story of a man by the name of Simon. Now, a lot of you, when I say the word Simon, you think of Simon, Simon Peter. And that's not who we're talking about here. We're talking about Simon, kind of simple Simon. We're talking about Simon the sorcerer today. He, he's a magician. And a little setup before we get to there is uh, that, that Simon, according to the Scripture, had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people. And uh, he was using the, this magic, uh, and we're not talking about sleight of hand here, I actually cover that in your in your next steps. We're not talking about some, you know, pulling a quarter. Uh, we're we're talking about he he was using power, uh, magic, uh, signs from the dark side, not from God, and he was using those for his own benefit. And he thought he was awesome. And not only did he think he was awesome, he thought that you should think he was awesome too. Uh, but it does say that that. Uh, uh, that he had been previously uh, uh, previously uh, showing his magic and amazing the people. And so uh, Simon, Simon the sorcerer, he heard Philip as he was preaching there in Samaria in the city. And he was seeing a lot of people came to believe in the gospel message. And Simon, too, came to believe, so it says. And he was baptized right along with the rest of them. And it says that Simon saw the signs and the miracles that were being performed by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he was amazed at what was going on. And um, so the, the apostles hear what's going on in Samaria, and we don't have time for the backstory there. And so they send Peter and John down there so that these people who had received the message, who were baptized, so that they would receive the Holy Spirit. And so Peter and John come and they lay hands on these people and they receive the Spirit. Now we'll pick up on uh, chapter 8, verses 9 through 20. Well, actually, I'm gonna, the passage we're looking at is 18 through 24. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he appeared that he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of the wickedness of, of yours, and pray that the Lord that pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. For I see 
You are in, in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. Simon answered, pray for, pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, you know what? I got one word for that. Busted. Busted. Simon is absolutely busted. He, this big reveal has happened, and just like we would do, we would say, I want that to come to my house. Okay, he saw the power that was there, and he wanted that to come to him. But the thing is, he didn't want it for the right reasons. See, Simon previously had used his magic, the dark side. He had used that for income. And so then he started thinking, well, gosh, if I had this thing that these people wanted or that they needed, then they would come to me, I would be able to get it, and he'd have a thriving business. Now, back up a few weeks ago, do you remember when we were talking about Peter, uh, when we were at the gate, the gate called Beautiful? And I said, Peter could have set up uh, uh, the Apostle Peter's International Healing Institute Ministries, right? And, and, and it's the same type of deal, but what did Peter say? All of this came from God, and he gave him, gave him the, uh, the credit for it. But so, so at this point, uh, they know that Simon's reasoning for wanting the power was not pure. His motives were not pure. And that's horrible, isn't it? But that's not even the worst part of the, part, uh, of the story. The apostles not only discerned uh, uh, his sin and, and the fact that, they, that he was doing wrong, but they reprimanded him. And they came in and they didn't mince their words. They, they used absolutely stern words as they were, they were talking to him. Now, if you notice there, sometimes when somebody's doing wrong that we ought to come with a gentle spirit. Right? And then there's sometimes that you ought to speak with power and authority and speak to whatever that is and say, this has got to stop. Right? And that's where they, that's where they were, and they address this, this situation head on, and they basically say, you cannot buy God's love. It's something that we receive because it's a, it's, it's, it's a gift. <clears throat> but when Simon, he's called on the carpet, he did not say, pray that my heart may be changed, see, which is what they, they would have loved for him to do, for him to, for him to have an understanding of, oh yeah, I've done wrong. But that's not what he does. He says, pray that those things that you've said won't happen to me. He was asking not for a change of heart, but he was, he was asking, he wanted to be protected from the consequences of his sin. How many of us are like that? I'm going to let that settle in just a second. Rather than, God, help me to do better. Help me in this way. Would you, you know, Lord, and, and you even hear me pray sometimes. Lord, in your correction, please be gentle. If it's me, if it's you, I'm like, smite them, Lord, smite them. No, 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 not really. Not you. Not you. But, but this is a sad state of affairs for this person, Simon the sorcerer. It's a sad that, that he had a chance that he could have come with a redemptive heart. And have you ever wondered, you know, a lot of people, they, they come into the Scripture accounts and then they kind of like drift off and we never know what happens to him, right? Well, do you ever wonder what happened to Simon? The Scripture doesn't tell us, but the tradition is that he went insane and he actually buried himself alive. Wow, yeah. But, yeah, but prior to doing that, he wanted to make sure that he could go out and he went out and he shared the teaching of Gnosticism. And you want me to say it again? Gnosticism. And so as he went out, and basically uh, of all their teachings, there, there's two main ones uh, that he went out and shared, that God could not have created the world out of matter was, the, was one. And the second thing, <coughs> the second thing uh, was that uh, Jesus could not have become man and died for your sins. 
Now, you ready for the big reveal for me this morning? One of those epiphany moments. John wrote his first epistle in order to uh, uh, teach to people that this Gnosticism was not true. He wrote 1 John in order to argue that. 1 John 3, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God. The, the scripture that I was given to start, to start today's message with. So, so in this big reveal, <clears throat> do you remember the first time that you heard the gospel message? Do you remember the first time that you actually received the gospel message? Do you remember the first time that there was some sort of, of tugging? And how many times that you kind of... And then the first time that you actually accepted that and you came in, do you remember the excitement that you had when you understood that there was a renovation that could happen and that you could come live in every single room of that renovated and transformed place. And some of us haven't got beyond the porch. Ty says, go check out your house. And you get in there and on the porch and say, isn't this great? Because that's how a lot of us are in our transformed spiritual life. We don't continue on and continue on to grow and grow. Right? Or is that just me? Now, some of us may still be looking for our big reveal. Amen? I know God's been working on, <laughs> working on my reveal for a long, long time. And from the outside, sometimes it doesn't look like much has changed. Uh, I have some displaced hair. Uh, you know, it used to be here, and now, it, now it, it's different. And you see the aging process taking, taking place. But on the inside, on, on the inside, there's way more joy. There's way more compassion. There's way more... How about you? On the, on the inside, can, do you understand that he's doing things inside of you that maybe others can't, haven't quite seen yet? I have to admit that sometimes uh, my transformation probably is not as much extreme makeover home edition as it is kind of Bob Vila coming over with this old house, you know. <laughs> And Bob's sitting there kind of pointed at a little cracked window going, you know, we're, we're going to fix this. We're, we're, we're going to see if we can replace. We think we can live with the old heating system, you know. But, but yet sometimes I am. I'm looking, I'm looking for that big reveal. I'm looking for, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for somebody to finally move that big bus out of the way so that, so that I can more fully see what it is. Ultimately, when you get back to the the First uh, John three, the part that I use at, at, at funerals, the big reveal is coming. One day we shall see Christ for how, who, and how He really is, because we'll see Him as as He truly is. For He is holy, and we, when we put on the robe of righteousness, we too become holy. Have you ever looked and 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 truly thought that? You know, that person really is being Christ to me. And it comes sometimes in the most unusual ways. It might be from somebody pouring orange juice. Somebody that uh, doesn't laugh when you fall. I'm talking to you, youth. Somebody, somebody that, that has, has some sort of, of uh, love and care. I don't have time to get into it. Some of you say thank you. There is a reason. I'll, I'll do it. I'll go there. 
Come on up. The people, we believe, we believe that at the point that you accept Christ and you're baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? Was... But when the apostles heard that the people in Samaria had received, had received uh, uh, the blessing of the gospel and were baptized, they did not receive the Holy Spirit. And so Peter and John came and they laid hands on the individuals and they received the Holy Spirit. And I believe part of that was so that the Samaritans, the people of Samaria, would know that they were receiving the same Holy Spirit that had, had come from Jesus uh, into the early church, into the apostles, into the early church. It was that connection to be able to bring all that together. My question this morning is, do you want to more fully receive the understanding of who God is? Because there's, there's always more. There's always more. Let us not be those people that, that kind of slink off in, in trying to be in the darkness so that nobody understands that we're not perfect. If you're perfect, raise your hand. You understand? In other words, we, we've all sinned and we've, we've fallen short of the glory of God. How about, it, how about if, we, if we truly ask Him, move the bus, move the bus so that we can see who it is that we have been created to be. You have transformed us. You have given us the opportunity to be able to live a life of, 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 of transformation. And some of us are just hanging out in the old shed that they still left in the back. How about if we reach out and, and we, we ask God to pour out the Holy Spirit on us gathered here and we have extreme makeover church edition. So not just individually but corporately. We start, can you imagine how many people would come out to see that? How many people's lives would be touched because of it? And why don't we ask him? Just like the, you can't see it on the outside, but I know it's on the inside. Maybe, maybe we ask him. How about starting to make that transformation even more visible? We have to start from the inside and out. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us the way that you do. We thank you so much for the big reveal, revealing yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> we thank you so much for, for reminding us that, that when we're caught in our sin, when we're caught in the things that we're doing, that, that you come and, and you invite us to a different way. You invite us to, to live in the transformation and to, to accept that. Let us not just be people that, that want to be protected from, from harm, from the consequences of our sin, but rather let us be people that, that come and truly want to be uh, conformed and transformed into being more Christ-like, to live out our mission of living intentionally in a Christ-like manner to bring glory to you. Let our time here of worship, let it, let it be something that, that truly speaks to us so that we can leave this place a changed people. Yeah, we on the outside, we may look the same, but I ask that you give us a joy that radiates from us so that people can truly see, can truly sense that there is something different. Give us compassion in our heart. Give us grace and mercy that others might know. Give us the patience on those that are, that are just now starting to live it out. Father, we ask that whatever your plans are, that you let us see those things. We ask that you move the bus out of the way and let us live more into your vision for us individually as well as corporately. We pray these things in the blessed holy name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, uh, the altar is open. Um, is uh, God may have uh, let you recognize something this morning. There's something in here that I'm not 
fully uh, living out. Uh, we don't have Peter and John here uh, to lay <laughs> to lay hands for you to, uh, to understand more, but uh, we we do have people who would be more than happy to come and, and pray with you, uh, so that you could receive the Holy Spirit even even more so in your life and live that out more. Um, Karen is here, uh, and she has her supplies. If you would like to. Uh, come and actually partner in ministry. We don't have members. We have partners in ministry. If you would like to come and be a part of the church, uh, Karen would uh, uh, just simple. Come get uh, name, address, and uh, how it is that we can contact you. Uh, maybe you've never been a part of a church at all, and, and maybe you want to come and, and say, you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and, and this is the day that I publicly um, tell the world, I intend to follow Christ, and we'll follow with baptism. We actually have a baptism set up for next Sunday. However he's directing you, please come.
Well, have y'all figured out who's going to be baptized next week? Uh, Hanson Higdon and I have hung out. And Hanson, I, I hadn't even told you. Uh, I remember uh, when a pastor came to my home and sat down on the couch, and we were in the good room. We were in the living room, and he sat there. And um, uh, as he talked to me, uh, I didn't understand it as much as you understand it. Of course, I probably explained it better than he explained it to me. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, yeah, good, good. But um, if you <laughs> if you will affirm uh, how incredibly happy you are with uh, Hanson's decision to follow Christ and follow with baptism, would you let him know? <laughs> I'm going to ask Hanson if he'll go to the back and uh, if you can heartily receive him into uh, uh, the, the church. Uh, as a partner in ministry. The other thing is some of us are upfront people and some of us are not upfront people. Uh, today we also receive into our membership, a uh, partner in ministry, uh, Matt Grissom uh, is officially partnering. And so, uh, if you will, as you go by, wave to him. Uh, 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 he's, he's over here and we're absolutely... Would you let Matt know that you're happy to receive him? Too? One last thing. We've gathered here in worship. Now it's time to go and be the church. Amen. Band practice. Reminder. Are they even still
it works. Lyrics 